gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Universe Within podcast. Uh, this episode of the show is sponsored by the Amazonian Plant Healing Center, the Temple of the Way of Light. Uh, it's a place I've worked at for a long time, and it was a really natural partnership, sponsorship. Um, the more I do this work, people are often asking me where I would recommend to work with a lot of these plants that I'm talking about on this podcast, like ayahuasca. And the first answer I always give is if people have the, the time and the resources to come to Peru, then I would recommend the temple. Uh, they, they work in the Shipibo lineage. Uh, the workshops are 12 days, six ceremonies, working with four different curanderos, which is really amazing. That's like four different uh, doctors or libraries that one is working with. Um, one has the chance to work with really experienced facilitators and teachers and just in general the the set and setting is really conducive uh, to allowing this work to to really take hold and to allow the guests who are coming down to really go deep in a, in a safe environment that the the where space is really held that allows that to happen we we often use this analogy of open heart surgery and if one is getting their heart operated on, then ideally you want to make sure you're in really good hands. And uh, that's what the temple does. So uh, if anyone is interested in working uh, with ayahuasca, I believe the temple is going to open up in March of 2021. Uh, it's been on hold for a while because of the pandemic. Um, but hopefully March 3rd of 2021, it'll be open again. Uh, but you can check the website for the updated information and dates about that at templetheWayOfLight.org, And there'll also be a link in the show notes. Um, in today's episode, I sat down with a beautiful woman uh, named Donia Wilma. And she was actually recommended to me by some friends of mine who work with her. Uh, she's a Cardo woman. Uh, they're a, a group of people who come from the Peruvian Andes. Uh, they, they live very high up. There's different communities. Um, but they, they hold a really long lineage of, of, of healing work, um, working with, with plants as medicine. Um, and one of the really fascinating things about them is one of their main medicines is nature, nature itself, and, and this reverence for nature, communicating with, with mountains, with water, with air, with, with the elements, fire, uh, making offerings, and, and really just this sense of, of gratitude and, and almost harnessing the power of nature and realizing that there's a direct correlation between our health and the health of nature. Um, so she's a really fascinating woman. Um, she actually speaks English, so this interview was done in English, and uh, I really enjoy talking to her. Um, we only had about an hour to chat, uh, but we got into some really interesting things, and hopefully she'll be back on in the future for a part two. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Uh, as always, if you are able to help to support the show financially, that's a really big help uh, to help me continue to do this show, to produce new content, to do new interviews, to, to help get new guests on. Uh, Patreon is a really good way to do that. Um, when you sign up for Patreon, there's added benefits on what tier you sign up for, but things like uh, question and answers, uh, early access to shows, extended interviews, bonus footage, things like that. So that's a really big help. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, there's a link in the show notes. Uh, and there's also an option for direct donation via PayPal. Um, and then also, if you're not able to do that, uh, simply subscribing to the show is a really big help. So going on YouTube, hitting the subscribe button, turning on that little notification bell, liking the video, that's a really big help. And then uh, if you have any questions or comments, leaving them in the comment section. And then for the audio version, Apple Podcasts is still the, the big one. So if you're able to go on there, also subscribe to the show and leave a starred rating and a review, that's a really big help. Uh, it helps to get the show out to a broader audience. It, it helps kind of with the algorithms. So it may seem like a small thing, but it is a really big help. So that's it. Uh, thank you all for the support. Those people who have uh, subscribed through Patreon or a direct donation, thank you very much. I appreciate it. To all the people who have subscribed, who have left a, a comment and a starred rating and a review, thank you very much. And without further ado, here is my interview with Doña Wilma.
So Donia Wilma, uh, Donia is a, a title you go mm-hmm. by? Mm-hmm. Yeah, after uh, uh, we get married, uh, we, we get a title because uh-huh. we, we have the family. So uh, that's a title of, uh, how you call it, uh, respectful yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. Mm-hmm. And so you come from the, the Caro uh, people. Yes, and um, uh, normally here uh, in the Andes, this is the mostly the more predominant, uh, how you call, language. Uh-huh. Here is the Quechua. 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 So in all in the Andes, uh, our mother language is Quechua. So I am Quechua as, as spoken mm-hmm. uh, from my mom. And... Uh, Sorry, I just forgot one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Entonces te miro más a ti. No, como quieres. Oh, ah, sí. yeah, yeah. Está yeah. bien. So, yeah, with... Yeah, and, uh, well, uh, my little town is... Uh, well, before this, it was a community, now it's, it's growing as, as uh, many villages and communities. My town is called Wasau, mm. which is located in the south of uh, area of Cusco. And, uh, and I become from, from both parents, from mom and papa side, uh, how you call, uh, healers. Uh, this is our generation, my generations. Um, oh, so both Papa and Mama, they, they learn from their grandparents. So this is the tradition here for the Quechua people, mm-hmm. um, basically. And how to, how to become, um, how you call, you can be a healer, you can help people, um, how to help people, basically. And uh, my mom is from that community, Wasau. Uh, my papa is from Paruro, and, and also his community is called Pacopata. So both, this, they are, uh, I mean, I think we are both, me and my brothers, uh, we are a fusion of, of that mm-hmm. union. And yeah, here we are still keeping and holding this tradition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, basically, I think that is why uh, um, we say we don't ask to the destined to be chosen in this in this path to take mm-hmm. to be in this path of uh, I mean helping people or do your best, but uh, it comes naturally. I think, mm-hmm. yeah. And where did you learn English from? <clears throat> uh, well, this is a little uh, uh, how you how you say it. It's, it's a tricky question <laughs> question because um, I remember. Uh, my grandfather, Don Benito Coriwaman, he became, I mean, he's the one who has, uh, uh, who, who had the opportunity to work with those uh, anthropologists, Don Oscar Núñez del Prado, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, also he's the one who has uh, taught to him uh, and, and Don Juan, his son, Núñez del Prado, uh, introduced uh, him, you know, the community of, of, of the Queros. Yeah, because also when he was youngest, he, he was uh, working in one of the haciendas there. Yeah, and then when he came back to, to my community, to my town, he says, Belma, and I mean, when he got married, and uh, he has continued doing his life. And then there were people, foreign just people from, mostly they were coming Europeans and a few Americans. Mm-hmm. And that I remember. Mm-hmm. I used to welcome them. So sometimes my grandpapa used to say, that, uh, he's my uncle, he never had children. So we got, uh, we grew up, I mean, I grew up closer to him. And uh, he says, you have to promise me, you have to learn their language. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. That was his big, uh, I think, dream of, about me. You yeah. have to learn. Why? And he says, no, because I have the feeling that they are not explaining what I want to say. Mm-hmm. No, when you are uh, Spanish-spoken, sp- and then when you are 
trying to learn Quechua is different. The accent also is different. Mm-hmm. And it's opposite is when you grow up with the Quechua and then you learn Spanish and then you can, after you learn other languages, it's the, the, action, the accent also is different. Even right now, nowadays people, when they, when they try to interview my papa or my mom, sometimes they don't understand with the Spanish. Mm-hmm. I mean, with Castilian that we speak. Mm-hmm. It's hard because the accent also is different. Yeah. That is why I learned by my parents. They helped me to learn an English in the private school. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, thank so you. So if, if people, I'm sure some of the people listening have heard of the Kero, but I, I imagine many people have never heard of the Kero people. So how would you describe them? What Maybe what, what separates them or what makes them unique? I, I know often they live very high up in the mountains mm-hmm. and they've they've maybe avoided some of the, the Spanish influence and they've they've kept this tradition alive. Um, uh, to be honest, uh, what is uh, keeping uh, uh, to those uh, to my families because we, I live with them as well, is just to not not try to lose our tradition. Yeah, not not try to be interference maybe in the way how we are how they are growing even especially with the children mm-hmm. because after you have the contact uh, I don't know with the Spaniards or with the people from the city you change you change and and you just want to leave your town or you want to do other things modern lives and then you don't want to uh, work anymore your land uh, and then uh, you don't want to maybe uh, it's it's like a, how you cause, how you may say it's it's like a um, it's like an attraction, mm-hmm. yeah. So that is why sometimes our elders, thanks to our elders, they're in Kero, that are still uh, forcing, and they they try to leave their legacy for them, you know, to protect, to keep alive that culture that for many years they have been holding a little isolated from the from the from the people, uh, I mean, from the Spanish, because it's not just uh, maybe not to be, uh, how you call, not just be maybe polluted by different uh, thoughts of life. Because for us in the Andes, uh, the most important is uh, we have a deep respect for the nature. We have a deep respect for our mountains, for everything that uh, is surrounding us. Mm-hmm. Uh, because sometimes people like nowadays uh, for example like mine companies they see a mountain it's like a it's like a like a gold or silver or any metal mm-hmm. objects and also they all what they are thinking is uh, it's just uh, maybe uh, material mm-hmm. yeah or maybe money but for us if we see a mountain we see like a like a this deep respect so a mountain for us Represent is like a uh, like a protector. It's a it's a guardian that they have uh, seen as grown. They have seen as the birth. Uh, uh, they they take they take care of us. They provide us food. Mm-hmm. They provide us health. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and they also they take care of our animals and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you said you 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 learned the the art of healing um, like a curandera from from your parents. They were yeah, both from curanderos. What I learned uh, the, uh, the 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 healing is I learned from my grandparents. Grandparents. Yeah, yeah. because that that was uh, how, uh, that's the tradition even until now for the Quechua people. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a, it was compulsory for our elders to teach to transmit their wisdom or their knowledge to the grandchildren. Mm-hmm. Unless you don't have uh, your grandparents, so now so the parents has to teach them. Mm-hmm. But in my family, it was uh, I may say there was no pressure because I learned from my from my grandpapas. And then until I was the eight, nine, ten years old, so they decide and they said, you're going to choose then your path. Now, is, now this is your path. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to continue study, you're going to study. 
Mm-hmm. So the one who have uh, uh, been very uh, uh, touching to me was my mom, because my mom says you have to study. You have to learn, at least uh, read, or you have to go to the, go to the school, or you have to go to the university. Because I want you also be, uh, uh, how you call, learn, huh? mm-hmm the society, what what are their, their thoughts or what they think about us. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, thanks to her, uh, she did an effort um, to send me to the school, to send me to the secondary school, and also to be able to learn foreign language and also to be able to go to the university, uh, even having less money, but... Uh, you know, uh, working hard, uh, having your your animals, uh, having your crops, I am, and being able to sell and do with uh, extra effort, you can do many things, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful. Mm. So for when, when you were learning, um, what is what are the, the ways the caros work to, to heal people? Or, are they working with plants or despacho or they're they're working on the mind like how do how do how would you view sickness in someone is it coming from jealousy or anger or there's a physical ailment that people have that you you cure with plants um well um yes uh, i just want to make uh, some uh some words uh, clear. Um, here in the Andes, being in Cusco area, and, uh, Cusco as a department, we call as a department, has uh, 13 provinces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, uh, and each province has their own districts and also each district they have their own communities. Each community, they have different tradition. Even if you move to a certain community, mm, uh, the tradition is different, and also the way uh, of I mean the way or the, the techniques how to you how you can how to help people how to heal people, yeah. And uh, when my mom and my pa and my father they they get married, so they decide to live in Wasab. And. Uh, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, my how what I learned from my elder and what's the difference between communities as well. Uh, in each communities, they have different tradition. Some some communities, uh, mostly mostly here in the Andes, uh, what the people they do is they they use herbs, they use plants mm, from the mother earth, and and what it help us. Uh, um, how how to heal people is is the faith and the deepest connection with the mother earth with the mother nature and the mountain so every family is they have a different techniques yeah and what makes me uh, personally from me as being a mm-hmm, uh, as 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 being the grandchild of of my elders is uh, for example is the connection with the earth, is the connection with the mother nature. And also oh, maybe it makes me a little be a little different from from the different communities. It's because when my mom was pregnant and uh, she was uh, uh hidden by the lightning. Wow. Yeah, and in three opportunities. So in here in the Andes, there is a tradition when you are being hidden by the lightning. So you have, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a blessing or it's like a choosing from the, uh, from how you call, uh, uh, from the mountains. Oh, we call, oh, here in, in the best understanding, maybe you may say you are chosen, you are chosen by the, by God or, or uh, we, we call from the apples. Mm-hmm. Mm? They choose you. And the child who, who if the person is, is carrying a child inside, both the mother and, and, and the child, they have a, a mission in their hands. Mm? That's, uh, that, that's what happened with me. Mm? Even that my, I become from my, 
grandparents healers yeah and um, my mom uh, was was hidden by the lining and uh, when she was uh, pregnant like uh, when she was four months and then again when she was seven months and then when when I born and the lining was keeping coming to the home and also in the community I am 36 old years old so we are talking about uh, like uh, 30 years 37 years ago and uh, my community was very 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 small and even all, all the elders they used to come home that's what my, what my mom and also my grandpapa used to tell me and it says uh, when you born the lining was coming home always as I remember when I was even child even until now sometimes if I go into certain uh, how you call uh, connection I think with the nature always the lightning comes mm -hmm. and so my elders used to say you don't have to be afraid because the lightning is your father as well mm -hmm. um, and most of the people they, they call this word carpai mm -hmm. carpai is like an initiation huh? mm -hmm. it's, it's like a, it's like awakening or it's, it's like a plus that makes the person uh, to make something extra else mm -hmm. Mm. that's what happened with me and uh, when I was child and I mean when I was eight years old eight seven years old I used to assist to my papa my elders as well and uh, doing in the in the ceremonies I was already leading some ceremonies mm. wow. and then when I was uh, uh, 12 13 uh, there were already clients coming when my papa and my mama were not able to help them because they were busy, I, I was helping them. But then my parents says, no, you have to stop. You have to study. You have, mm -hmm. you have to see also the world with a different mind. You cannot be just stuck here. I think that's happening in other communities as well. Because when you just close your mind or close, you focus on everything, you just, you, you, I mean, you make walls in front of you and you just want to think about your community and you don't want to think about it. Society sometimes is, if you see other things, it's new. It looks like an attraction or temptation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what uh, happened to me. And then my, my parents said, when I was, I mean, I was uh, complaining, I was asking to my, father, to my parents, but when I'm going to work? And they said, no, you have to study. You want to work when you want to decide. But first, please, you have to uh, uh, respect the promise that what they, my parents says for, to your elders, you have to study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then even um, my parents said, you have to even finish your career. If you finish and then you're going to decide which one you want to. So what I did is just, I decided just to combine both and helping more people. <laughs> Not just here in my area or not just in, in Cusco or in Peru, helping uh, people from different countries I'll be able to assist them in their uh, process of their life, basically. And uh, for me, the way how I help people is uh, connecting with the nature. For me, in my, uh, in my thoughts and also in, uh, in, in my tradition, and also representing the tradition from different communities, the tradition from the, these uh, 13 provinces, is that uh, we highly respect the Mother Earth. We deeply, uh, highly respect the mountains and the nature and all the elements of the universe because as our elders, they have uh, uh, taught us, is... Uh, the Mother Earth is alive. Everything that surrounds us has life. Even the herbs, even the plants, whatever, whatever, even the the oxygen, the air, what you are breathing has life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to their teachings, um, I was able, even until now, to help people, not only uh, maybe just uh, touching to them in the Andes uh, world, in, in the western side, you, you call Reiki. Most of the people here we do like uh, Andean Reiki. It's like teaching, uh, I mean, touching people or using some herbs, or using some techniques, but mostly it depends what's the person's energy. For example, if I work with a certain technique, I cannot use the same with you or with other person. 
because every person we we carry different energy mm -hmm. Mm? yeah you you mentioned this idea that 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 one of your main medicines is this this respect for nature yeah and I think for a lot of people, maybe they understand that, but they they don't know what to do with that. I mean, I, I went up to uh, to Kinsakocha, Pumacocha the mm -hmm. other day, and especially in Pumacocha, I could really... It had been a long time since I had been kind of almost alone with, with no other people around and just this silence and... Uh, this stillness and I found it incredibly healing and and I think many people maybe they don't have access to something like that but do you have any advice for how people can find their own way to connect to nature maybe they're living in a city or they're not surrounded by mountains but but what is the essence I mean for you how is connecting to nature, how can that be healing? Because, again, I think a lot of people, when they hear that, they understand mm -hmm. that that's true, something mm -hmm. resonates, but they don't know how to do that. Um, uh, first of all, I think, for in, from my experience, and uh, the people, what they have to do is they should allow and let and the the inner child comes out and express what they are feeling. For example, even if if you grow on to the children in the city, they like the free. They feel the freedom. They don't feel the fear. They feel that they are safe. So this is the same. The person they have to feel safe wherever they are, even if they are in the city. Just the appreciation and contemplation to the nature. Huh? whatever direction they are located. Uh, uh, for example, here in the, in, in the mountains, it's easy for me to speak because I am, I am very closer, uh, I am very connected with them. But what happens if I am in the city? Mm. What I do is just, I just try to wake up maybe a little bit more early. That's what I can suggest. Even with nowadays with this pandemic and everything that's going on in the world, people are very stressed very stressed, I mean, maybe burn out you know, somehow. And what they have to do is uh, maybe change a little bit in their life, try to wake up early. Here in the Andes, we are early birds. Mm -hmm. uh, like saying early birds is 3.30 <laughs> or 4 a.m. in the morning, that's our schedule for us to wake up. Even if we don't have nothing, nothing to do, but uh, because that's the moment for us to be in privacy with the nature. Mm, until seven or in in the morning, and uh, and for example, to this question, I have a friend in the morning who who had called me from Holland, and she says, "Where are you going?" And I said, "Well, you know, I was overwhelmed from with energy with work. I don't know what's going on. I just decided to walk in the morning, uh, five ten in the morning. I was walking, so my friend called me and she said, "How do you do that? I miss that." Because I'm turning to the winter. And I said, you don't need to miss that. You have to feel it. You have to feel it. But I don't have time. But no, you have time. Just try to, try to, try to change eh, your schedule. Normally, maybe uh, uh, our, our, our people in the world, they like to wake up like 6 or 7 in the morning. They can do like an hour before. Uh, if you want to have the privacy, I, I mean, if you want to have the nature just for you, that's what I feel. In the morning, that's all the people from the Andes will like to wake up early because you have the nature just for yourself, for with nobody else. Because you have the nature, you have the blessing of the birds, you have the song of the birds, you have the breathing, I mean, everything just for yourself, even the river. You have to enjoy that. So that's what I suggest also to my friend. We try to wake up maybe an hour before. Go for a walk. Hmm? You can go for a walk. Because in some areas the winter is just starting or it's just coming. No? There is a chance that you can go for a walk. Or maybe there are people that if maybe they are in the city, maybe they can make a little effort. They can go to the certain uh, hill areas. Colinas, we say. Um... Or you can go by the by the shore of the beach, uh, and and connect. Mm -hmm. 
with the energy of the, I mean, of the water, of the elements. There is always you have to find a manner how to connect with the nature. It's not just necessary for them to come to the mountain. Huh? Also for them is to put in practice what they can do. Or maybe they can uh, uh, listen uh, some music or some songs of nature songs, like a meditation. Huh? in silence, but you have to keep your mind, uh, be distracted, because what is the stress, what, what is the illness, is in your mind, not in your, uh, in your body, so that's what, he, uh, here in the Andes we heal, this, we heal the mind, we heal the, the heart, mm. sometimes people you may say, no, I cannot move my body, I cannot do, I do this, I, am, I have like, oh my God, I have a heart attack, or I am very allergic to something, there are some people that they use it. No, I'm al very allergic to the animals. I, the feathers, any feather cannot be touched because I'm going to be... Uh, I may have like convulsions in my body. But what happens if the person is distracted or uh, is distracting her, themselves and then when, even when you pass with the feathers, their body doesn't react. It's mm -hmm. here, it's in the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, what, that's what the person, the people, they have to do keep distract our mind or let their, their child, the inner of the child comes and feel huh, the freedom and the safetyness. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I hope it can make sense. Yeah. Sometimes I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know well how to No, it was speak. beautiful. Mm. One of the things I, I think the, the care to work with is, is this idea of despacho, like uh, making an offering uh, to, to, to the elements or to the apus, is that something you, you work with? Uh, yes, and uh, the same in different provinces and also uh, with the Keros, um, um, what we do is uh, we do certain offerings, uh, we call despacho. Despacho is there are uh, items to connect um, in gratitude with, them, with Pachamama. That's that's our word for us, Pachamama, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Pachamama and the mountains. Mm -hmm. So we have to feed Pachamama, um, or we have to we have to make like a trade. Mm -hmm. That's the for us. That's the meaning here in the Andes. If you go more more highest in 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 in, in the communities, uh, in always the people they're gonna say, okay, let me let me welcome you. Let me help you to well to be. Uh, let me help you to be welcome in this land or in this place uh, with a despacho, with despacho ceremony. So there are there are elements that, that you have to be connected with uh, with uh, with elements of Pachamama, and and also in order to be well received in the land or in the place, or also to be part of the universe. So that's the that's the tradition for us mm -hmm. mm. always the keros yeah. um, excuse me yeah. uh, always uh, even the kero people or people from different uh, communities um, the, uh, the people who are uh, uh, how can I say it? Um, who are very connected uh, uh, in the in the spirituality always they're gonna invite you always they're gonna suggest you to uh, to ask uh, or to do a despacho ceremony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, for example, eh, when, whenever you visit, whenever you go, uh, for example, to a, to a place or to a home, mm -hmm. let's say. Uh, even if you, let's say, if you invite me to come to your home, so I cannot, you can say, it, oh, no, you can't just go. I cannot go all that. So for us, for, there are rules. You have to knock the door first. You have to ask to be welcome or not. For example, you have a guardian here, you have the dog. Hmm? Maybe I am welcome from you, but no from the dog. Mm -hmm. So I need to ask for permission. And also the whoever lives here, they have to know that I am welcome mm -hmm. hmm? in your area. So hmm. so it's, it's basically, it's, basically it's, it's kind of example in the energy way. Mm -hmm. So that is why people... Uh, uh, also from Keros, also from different communities, always they're going to suggest you mm, to 
to make an, a little offering to Pachamama. Always they're going to say, no, for Pachamama, a despacho ceremony, yes or yes. Because, because this is the rule. Mm -hmm. mm? That's the rule. Even uh, uh, nowadays, uh, how can I say, in certain provinces or in certain communities or villages, some people, uh, they don't like to be, uh, how you call, um, to call the attention from others. Always they, always they will want to keep... Huh? Uh, how you call uh, their their privacy? Mm -hmm. It's hard to find some people because when I was studying tourism, uh, uh, eighteen years ago, because also I wanted to be involved uh, with people taking to different places. Uh, 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 um, one of my teachers, they asked me, he said, you have to do like a researchment. Uh, you have to talk about the uh, spirituality. And then they didn't know that also I was part of them. And I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. So we were like uh, seven or six uh, students. They sent us uh, uh, f for that area of Wankarani, I remember. So we were doing like a, like a map. So we were doing like a, like a touring air project. Uh, I remember that uh, a couple of my, uh, uh, how you call, uh, student mates, uh, they were not speaking, well, they didn't speak Quechua. And after two or three days walking, after camping and walking, camping and walking, um, also our, our food uh, were, were finished. Uh, so yes or yes, uh, well, we have some savings like coca leaf. And the coca leaf help us to trade huh, with some supplies or some food from the communities, huh, from the people. Otherwise, they say, who are you? Uh, what are you planning to do here? Huh? Why you came here? Always they're going to be asking you. And some of well, my, my mates, uh, they didn't, I mean, they didn't speak Quechua. And they were, they were dying because they were hungry. There were nothing to eat there. And the people, what they say is they, they just keep distance. Only a few people, they will open their doors and say, come, or I can help you, may I help you, may I assist you. Because if you don't touch their heart, they're going to be, they're going to make like a wall. They won't let you in. Maybe they can help you, but just from distance. Mm -hmm. uh, in the spirituality, always the people, uh, um, they are very, how you call, reservados. Huh? Reservados. Reserved. Reserved. Yeah. yeah? No... No, always they gonna they gonna tell you everything, or no, always they gonna give you everything. Mm? From one to ten, only they they may gonna give you two. Apparently, they are gonna make you that they are telling you everything, <laughs> but no. Uh, so it's uh, that's our elders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I find that interesting because um, working with stronger plants, especially with other people, one one of the things for me when I see that the plants have really touched someone, is they're often, lent, they're often left with a sense of, of humility and a sense of gratitude. And I, I remember working uh, sometimes with, with this guy. He's uh, from this group of people called the Arawaku. They, they live in the north of Colombia. And people would ask him questions, and almost every question had the same answer. Mm -hmm. It was something around... Falto un pagamiento, mm -hmm. like uh, you haven't you haven't made a payment, you haven't you haven't given back. There's no reciprocity, and that that to me seems really interesting in the despacho, as it seems to combine that that reciprocity, giving something back, but also with this sense of of humility and gratitude. Uh, you know, being grateful, saying thank you. You know, thank you to the mountain or thank you to the water. And I think with that, there's also a humility there of, of realizing like how, how great these forces are. You know, it's, I mean, that's something I felt being in the mountains is just how small I was. I mean, one storm comes along, <laughs> yeah. finished. You know? Yeah, yeah, and it's, that's true, that's you know. true. Yes, uh, I agree with that because uh, um, I think uh, humility uh, means a lot. Mm -hmm. And also, it's uh, um, 
and also as you have been maybe traveling and visiting and meeting different people from different regions and also from different areas and always uh, that word you know falta un pagamiento yes mm? it's uh, it's uh, it's true because uh, um this word that we say is everything is an aini mm -hmm. mm? yeah mm, you know if, if that friend uh, says that falta un pagamiento because also also in, in so I may add to that word that everything is aini mm -hmm. mm? you receive uh, what you give mm -hmm. so that is why sometimes um mm, Sometimes uh, people say, okay, I'm going to pay you, but I want you to do this ceremony. But it's the, also, it depends how you are asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's also that this word no, of gratitude and also humility is very important. Because it, says, it's, it's not, it doesn't mean it's how much you have and how much you can give and how much you, you can receive. The humility is how... Huh? How deep is open your heart? Um, how deep you are accepting or you are allowing yourself um, mm. to make it, it possible? Um, so it's, it's like I need. So you have to make, first of all, is uh, the gratitude to Pachamama, um, gratitude and also respect and a deep uh, connection. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you have any recommendations if, if people wanted to start to, to create a despacho or, or do something like that? Is there, is there simple ways that they could mm. cultivate that practice? Um, uh, for example, I've been... Uh, there are uh, a couple of friends that, uh, that we've been uh, teaching. No? We've been creating like uh, some courses, how the people, they can integrate themselves Sometimes maybe it's, it's hard for them to travel and then uh, and also to learn directly. You no, know? what I may suggest uh, to the people is uh, first of all having gratitude. Maybe they cannot do a despachito hmm? because no no any person can do a can lead a ceremony can do a despacho ceremony. First they have to receive like a certain train. Mm -hmm. They have to learn certain steps or certain, uh, you call, um, process, mm -hmm. how you can connect. It's like, a, it's like medicine. Uh, as you said, for example, you cannot give no one this, uh, the medicine from the jungle. Huh? You can say, okay, you have learned enough, so take it and drink it and tell me what is your experience. Because maybe the person is, is ready here but not here. Mm -hmm. So what you what I can recommend the person is uh, first of all always as I said to my friends you have to cheer with the universe you have to cheer with Pachamama mm. Mm? but and but they say how come and how mm? the celebration for example when you are preparing your best meal at home. Mm -hmm. When you are when you prepare a best meal is maybe with if someone's anniversary or you want to celebrate something or a birthday or I don't know any any memorial thing that you may, that you may celebrate and the first dish or the first plate huh, has to go in honor that's what we do here in the Andes. Mm -hmm. Mm, it's, it has to be in, in honor, in honoring and respectful, in, in honoring, and also in the memory of our elders and also from for of of Pachamama because Pachamama is our mother. She's the one. Uh, she's the one who doesn't judge us. Mm. Mm. But still, with uh, people, with their children are misbehaving. But she's still, you know, nurturing us. She's still forgiving us. So what else you can do? Even doing your 10 or 100 despachos never going to be enough because, you know, to touch the heart of Pachamama because Pachamama is big and she's always going to provide you her love, her health and everything, whatever you receive. So what we do in the Andes, uh, in, in what I do in my home, um, is 
and we cheer with Pachamama. The first plate I have to hold and they, before I try it or I taste the meal, like I just breathe, it just takes you 10 seconds. Doesn't take you long, doesn't take you one hour or two hours unless you want to do your own pilgrimage. That's different to certain places. If you are doing fasting, also it's kind of honoring. But um, the best gratitude is when you are serving the first plate, you have to breathe deeply and just blow it. Blow to the mountains, blow to the best place that brings you the best memories, huh? the happiest of your life. Never, never bring back those sadness moments. You have to, you have to cheer with that place. For example, if you have been in Italy, I don't know, in some place that very touch you, mm, that brings you mm, 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 the best, happiest moment. You have to just remember that place and say, thank you. I honor that place. Or I honor that place where I born. Mm, I want to honor with this gratitude. You just blow it. Or you can take a glass of wine or a bottle of wine. You can go to the certain hills of the little mountains. And then you can cheer with the, with the ocean and you can cheer with, the, with your land, with the place where you're born, or with the land of your ancestors. Huh? Pouring all the wine, but you, have to, but you have to declare, you have to talk. It's like sharing too much Pachamama. Or you, or you can grab like a big uh, ceramic glass. Hmm? ceramic glass you can pour all the wine and you can say this is my gratitude and you can live in one of the past uh, areas hmm. in any place so there are there are things that uh, you can make simple but uh, with a deep huh? with a deep uh, connection with a deep gratitude hmm. to Pachamama it's the same also for the, for the medicine. There are people that uh, they, that's what I, um, su I may suggest uh, highly uh, to those people who they come also um, to, to be initiated or to in certain ceremonies or in certain medicines, in some in certain mystical way, hmm? always to make a gratitude. Make a gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm talking too much. No, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we we have some coca there. Is is coca something you work with? I I know some coca of the leaf, Kera. Yeah, coca leaf for the Andes is very sacred. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very sacred for us. The coca leaf. Uh, I mean, that's the connection for our elders. Mm -hmm. I remember my elder, and uh, that I especially. If they choose the coca, they just touch the coca, and they choose immediately, they can tell, they can feel how, who you are, mm -hmm. what is your intention, why you came. Mm -hmm. uh, they can predict everything. So the coca leaf for us is very sacred, in which way it's a connection with Pachamama, it's a connection with the universe, it's a connection with the elements. So that is why still nowadays, even they, they have been passing, uh, maybe they say the peoples, uh, chronically they say 700 years ago, the Incas that are still well here, they were very strong and huh, working. It's thanks, thanks to the energy uh, uh, of Pachamama. And also how deep they were very connected with the land. Uh, for example, chewing the coca leaf, cheering, or just connecting um, with humility, mm? with Pachamama, with the, with the mountains, you can ox the land, you can remove the land just with your hands and certain tools in one day, certain uh, dimension, no? We can do, I don't know, um, depend. Or maybe all this area I may do with the two people in one day. Because I'm connecting. I'm connecting with the energy. I'm connecting with the element of Pachamama. Huh? To, be, uh, to be soft. Huh? To, I'm, I'm calling for the support of the energy. So it's kind of... Uh, of, a, uh, of a, connection that make us mm -hmm. yeah and why do you think uh, of all of the plants around here coca seems to hold such a an important place is it is it that it 
it helps us physically, it helps us mentally, it, it helps us spiritually, like it, it's working on all these levels. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, why, why of all the plants is coca? I mean, it seems to hold such a special place in, in mm-hmm. so many of the cultures around here. Um, coca for us uh, is considered very sacred. It says it's considered a connection with our, with, with our sacredness and with the sacredness of the universe of Pachamama. So most of the people, they may say, oh, no, I'm going to chew coca leaf and I'm going to be hallucinating many things. But no, hmm? you, the coca is represent the, uh, the uh, sacredness hmm? and how to, uh, uh, how you call, uh, how to be just, be part of the nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's for it's for years huh? for our from our elders, but there is still for maybe for some people it's still there is a mystery. But uh, coca for us, it it help us, it remind us who we are, huh? who we are, and also it remind us that we belong from the from the Pachamama. Huh? I mean, we belong from the land, and not the land from us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, another another person I work with in Colombia fr- from the Amazon, they they take the coke and they make it into a powder. Mm. They they call it mambe, and then they they'll, they'll keep it in their mouth, often with some some paste of tobacco, mm-hmm. and and they have ceremonies. And like you said, it's not that they're hallucinating, but they're very present. And they would say it's quite beautiful. They would say that the the coca gives sweetness to the word so that when we speak there's a sweetness it's the, the word isn't harsh it's not accusatory mm-hmm. or and and they're trying to resolve conflicts and tell stories and they would say the coca it, it makes the word sweet and then they would say the tobacco it's like a it's like a pact like a handshake so that if if we resolve a conflict Hopefully the coca allows this conflict to be resolved. And then the tobacco is like a pact saying, okay, we, we give our word. Now mm-hmm. now it's finished. It, it's over and, and we move on. Mm-hmm. And it's, I find it interesting how some of these plants like coca and tobacco, they're, they're used in so many places, but they, they seem to have very similar functions in a way. And... I find coca very interesting because, as you said, it's not hallucinatory, but it seems to bring a really deep presence, uh, an awareness, a connection to things, uh, almost like a joining together of people. And uh, I mean, maybe, I, I don't know, but maybe that's why people are often sharing coca leaves. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, here in the Andes is very uh, typical for us. It's, uh, it's, it's like the key to enter or to go any place, mm? and also to to socialize in. Mm? Uh, why I am saying like it's like the key to enter, it's like it's the key to enter in someone's heart, to someone in, into the into the um, sacredness. And the coca leaf, also we call mama coca. It's just like the Pachamama. It's the one that uh, is, is a, how we call it, it's a healing um, uh, sacred leaf for us. Uh, for example, people, uh, you're going to find very um, very few people that who going to complain about, who going to tell you about their problems. Mm? So here in the Andes, what uh, our people, what we do, if we have any, 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 any problems, uh, if there is anything that uh, we think that it won't be able to be fixed, to be resolved, or what we do is, uh, is, is, is like a bridge, uh? it's, a, it's a connection between the coca and the and the spirit of the nature, uh? and, and the spirit of, I mean, of the energy of the Mother Earth. We talk. While while we are talking, while we are connecting, and that is why people they said go go and do your meditation, but the meditation here in the Andes is you have to talk, talk mm-hmm. your problem, mm-hmm. and also the coca is the one that helps you uh, to speak, mm-hmm. from your heart, mm-hmm. what's going on with you, and then there is a days uh, maybe when you are chewing and connecting or talking, 
It's like uh, we talk to the mountains. It's like our, uh, how we say, uh, the mountain is like our grand, grand, great grand, grandparents. We talk to them because we know that they listen to us. It's like the Pachamama, or it's like the elements of the Mother Earth. We, we talk to the wind, we talk to the water, we talk to the fire. For us, all the elements has life. So, and there are uh, there are different ways how you can connect, but through the coca leaf. Mm -hmm. mm? It's a beautiful connection. Mm -hmm. mm? It's, it's still a mystery as well. <laughs> mm? You mentioned this idea of, of talking to mountains, and, and I know here there there's certain mountains that, that people consider sacred, the, the apus. What what makes something an apu and, and, and what makes it what makes it sacred? What makes it th this 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 powerful thing that, that one can speak to to, to resolve their problems? Mm. Um, for example, I mean in the Andes from our elders they teach us and also I grew up with that uh, tradition and also I have I have uh, proof uh, that the mountains for us are sacred. They can talk to you and you, you can connect with them and which mountains they have different rules. Mm -hmm. um, they play different rules in life. It's like the society. Um, um, why the mountains are very are considered sacred? Why the apu are very considered sacred? For us, we call there are hierarchies as well mm? Mm. in the in the Andes and also in the medicine and in in the energies. Um, the mountains, uh, the high peaks, mm? for us, um, and also different mountains. They have uh, certain energy for us in the Andes. Uh, the mountains uh, uh, they have considered uh, how can I say. Um, They have their own rules and they know uh, how to he heal. Uh, I mean, how can I explain that? Uh, las montañas, uh, cada montaña tiene un propósito. Each mountain, they have their own, their own unique purpose. For example, uh, my mountain, Pachatusen. My mountain, Pachatusen, um, my mountain means uh, the axis of the world. Mm. So a lot, a lot of people from different regions, from different directions of, of South America, always they're going to be connected with my mountain. Mm -hmm. Because that's the heart. Mm? Or my mountain is considered like the, like the belly button uh, of, the uni I mean, of the world. Or, or they call Apu Pachatusen, it's considered like the ombligo del mundo. Huh? Mm. Yeah, and then it's the axis, it's Pachatusen, Pacha means the earth, the earth. Tusan is the axis, it's where, it's, it's, it's where the global world, you know, in geography, they teach us, they teach us. Mm. This is the world, so they are, this is dancing. You know, it's, it's, that's, it's, that's, that's what our elders used to say, here is, this mountain is holding the universe. So it, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. So it has a meaning for us. All the uh, south area mm, connecting with Tipon, Wasau, uh, Wakarpai the lake, and Piquillacta, which is also pre Inca, and all, all that this uh, south area, it has an important meaning. It is, it's like, a, it's like a, one of the vortex of certain places of, of the world. Yeah. So that mountains for us, for me, is um, is is doctor. He heals. Hmm? People that they they go with different illnesses, you know, they they talk, and one of the mountains, for example, Picol, without going too far, is is is, is a lawyer. If the if the person they have, uh, I don't know, issues with the, with the justice, hmm? they go and specifically they do a despacho ceremony uh, in order to connect with the mountains or in order that uh, to ask for the support in certain problems of the person. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And also we have uh, the old Apu Ausangati. That's a family, that's a big family mountain range. Mm-hmm. Because that mountain is located, is, is, yeah, Ausangati, this place they call Macho Ausangati, Wayne Ausangati is the brother, uh, is, is the father and the son. Also, other people they say is is the they are two brothers and the wife and and their daughters. So for us, represent the family mountain range, it means a connection with the family. Huh? The people they wanna have family. If, if, if the person they wanna I don't know they want to go into a good or into the right relationship. Huh? You you gotta ask. Mm-hmm. So a different person they have different purpose. Mm-hmm. It's like the human beings. It's like the reality. Uh, 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 for example, uh, as a human being, let's say, you have your pet, I have my pet. Also, the old apples and the mountains, they have their own pets. For example, we have our horses. Uh, also, they have their horses, the deers. Different, we have different races of horses. They have different races of, of animals. We have our rabbits. Also, they have their wild rabbits. Mm-hmm. So um, we are balancing. So we are balancing. So it's uh, how we call. Um, when we call in certain ceremonies, when we call uh, with the universe, uh, we ask to the Milky Way. It's the same how it's up, it's, it's down. Uh, it's the same how it's back, it's in front. Mm-hmm. So always we're going to be... Mm, connecting. Yeah. Mm. Is is would you say that's one of the fundamental principles that that you're you're working on with with health is that same analogy like so is without so is within if if I'm not taking care of the environment outside then I can't be taking care of the environment inside there's there's a relation and what's what's good for the inside must be good for the outside as well. Mm-hmm. See, um, um, the person has to uh, uh, how can I say? The person has to take. Uh, uh, they has to. They, they have to ask for 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 help. For example, if 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 the person wants to say, uh, Bilma or or whoever you talk. To it says I I need to be healed, I have something I don't know what I have. Could you help me? Or you can ask someone can Could you help me? Could you assist me? So the person is gonna help you immediately. Is gonna find what's going on with the person. How the person can help you? Maybe it's not just from the outside. It's maybe something related with one of your ancestors or what have happened before. Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the person has to check, and then after the person finds uh, what it can be, he, he goes to help the person. Mm-hmm. It's not just necessary what's going on from the outside and what's inside, and also you have to check. Mm-hmm. Mm. And and with that same idea of asking for help, uh, does, does there need to be a reciprocity of? Of not just, for example, I, I come to you and I'm like, I'm sick, heal mm-hmm. me. There, there, there also would need to be something from me, too, that's willing to give. Like a, like a willing to change or to, to look inside. Mm-hmm. And See, um, uh, for example, if you come to me and for ask, asking for help, what I can say at first is, um, let me help you. And then how we can help first. So I ask, for example, what I do is I assist the person, first of all, to be able to help themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then if, if there is a no way, if, if there is no way how you can help yourself, so I immediately can assist you. Mm-hmm. But what's, uh, what's in between is that, um, what can I say this? Uh, maybe if they if there are things that is related with your with your roots uh, or your background um, that's that's uh, nowadays is is a lot of um, happening is there are a lot of people that they they don't want to be connected anymore with their with their parents or with their grandparents 
or with their roots. Maybe they have had some, I don't know, some violence. They have having something, so they want to cut. But how can I help that person? The person has to first has to forgive them. Mm -hmm. The forgiveness is one of the principles also that the person has to carry and has to have in their heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're at one hour. I, I feel like there's there's so there's much some, more we could talk uh, about, but maybe I, I know we're we're we have a, a time limit, so uh, um, maybe we, we have a lot to talk about for another episode. <laughs> but thank you so much. That was wonderful. Is there anything else you'd you'd like to talk about or mention before? Uh, no. Mm, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation, and uh, yes, just to. Uh, to to invite the, to the people uh, first of all be themselves mm -hmm. mm -hmm. be themselves and uh, uh, live in, in gratitude uh, life is a blessing life is giving us a give us a new opportunity of um, to enjoy mm -hmm. and uh, live in grace live in gratitude and and also um, honoring always themselves. Mm. Mm, yeah. Every time every time they wake up, yes, breathe and be in gratitude with the universe. Mm. Yeah. First of all for us, everything is Pachamama or Mother Earth. Mm. Thanks to her we are here. We can have everything in, in life, but uh, be mm, in deep connection with Pap Pachamama it's it's different as well. Well, beautiful. Thank Muchas you so gracias. much. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Um, if people want to contact you, is, is there a way they can reach you? Uh, um, uh, well, my name is uh, Vilma Pinedo. They can find me. and uh, I mean, I don't have uh, specifically a link. Um, I am new in the technology. Okay. Uh, um, well, they can find me in the Facebook. This is, is a Wilma PS. Okay. Yeah. Mm, only that. And then through that, maybe uh, we can give any any number, any information. Mm -hmm. All right. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. well, I'll, I'll put that in the, the links of the show so people can reach out to you if, mm -hmm. they, if they feel. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Yeah. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Jason. <laughs> Okay, everybody, that is it. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Doña Wilma. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to her, and I hope to have her back on soon. Um, as always, if you're able to support the podcast, uh, Patreon is a really good option. There's a link in the show notes. It gives you early access to episodes, bonus material, Q&A. Uh, so that really helps. That's, that's also one of my favorite things now is when I hear that little Patreon notification go off uh, showing that there's support. Uh, it just It's a really nice feeling knowing that, that people are getting value from this podcast. Uh, there's also the option for a direct donation via PayPal. There's also a link there. And then if you're able to help with the algorithms by going on YouTube for the video version, subscribing to the show, turning on the notification bell, liking the video. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section. And then for the audio version, going on Apple Podcasts, uh, also subscribing to the show and leaving a starred rating and a review. That's a really big help. So everyone who has supported with the show, thank you very much. And if you're able to do that, also thank you very much. Um, I have some good guests coming up. Uh, uh, I think the next one is probably going to be with my friend Marav. She works with tobacco, uh, so she's going to be talking about her process with that, uh, what that means to work with tobacco, the tradition that she's, she's uh, trained in. Um, I think I'm also going to have a guy named Roman on. He uh, started a, an ayahuasca institute called Paititi, which is a very good center, and he's been doing this work for a really long time. So he should be a really interesting guest. And then I'm also hoping to uh, soon schedule an interview with a gentleman who works with Iboga in Africa, in Gabon. Uh, and that's a medicine I've worked with, and I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for it. Uh, and, and he's a really interesting guy. So some good guests coming up. Thank you for all the support. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys on the next episode.